Hi, welcome to Customizing Tracker Products, where we'll take a deep dive into our tracker products to help you get started with this powerful platform. Throughout this series, we'll talk about common use cases that require customization. We will also go over the different components of the tracker platform and how they work as a foundation for you to build on top of. And finally, we'll learn how to get started with both firmware development and custom cloud configurations that you can then deploy to your fleets at scale. Before we get started, I want to call out that this video is aimed at developers who are already familiar with the off-the-shelf offering of our tracker products. Viewers should have familiarity with the console's map view and configuration settings, as well as with the location published that our tracker devices use. If this does not sound familiar, I encourage you to watch the videos in the description first before moving on to this one. Alright, let's continue. First, let's talk about why you would want to add custom logic to your tracker devices. As you can imagine, there are many different reasons for which you might require customizing your tracker devices, but these will typically fall under two main categories. Connecting external sensors, what we will typically call tracking plus. You want information coming off the CAN bus, a serial interface or an external sensor and add it to the location data to provide meaningful context or customizing the fleet settings. You may want to send asset-specific data to your tracker, such as a registration ID or a calibration value for a sensor that varies from place to place. Or you might simply want to expand the default capabilities of our configuration, like to create polygonal geofences instead of circular ones. Any of these examples will require some form of customization, whether it be in hardware, firmware, software, or a combination of these. So let's dive in. Before we go into the details of customization, it's important to understand the tracker stack and how it builds on top of the Particle Platform Foundation. Let's begin with the hardware layer. With our standard cellular SOM, the BSOM, we make no assumptions about the application it is going to be used for. Therefore, all of the decisions regarding power management, sensors, and interfaces are left up to the designer. It's a bare-bones connectivity module, so to speak. In contrast, with the tracker SOM, we wanted to incorporate features that are common in asset tracking applications. So in addition to the cellular modem for connectivity, we added, amongst other things, a GNSS module for positioning, a CAN transceiver to connect the vehicle's diagnostics ports, an IMU and a battery management module. This greatly simplifies the hardware development process that you need to take in order to get your product out into the field. Now let's talk about the firmware layer. While you could certainly start from scratch with a blank project, for our Tracker products we have a reference application architecture called Tracker Edge. It's meant to abstract the complexities of interfacing with the different hardware modules such as GNSS and CAN, as well as support the Tracker-specific cloud features that we'll talk about later. The best part is that all this was done with customization in mind. So even though behind the scenes Tracker Edge is handling a lot of stuff, it does so in a way that you're still capable of easily adding your custom work on top of it. To give you an example of this, take a look at the code snippets here. To the left, you can see a standard particle main file, and to the right, you can see the main file of a Tracker Edge application. With just a couple of libraries and two lines of code for init and loop, you're able to leverage all the tracking features while making it easy to add your use case code. And since this is a reference application, you're welcome to explore and extend the different libraries available, such as the Motion class or the Geofencing class, beyond what Tracker Edge uses them for. Lastly, let's go over the Cloud layer. The Asset Tracking System adds two new services on top of the device management platform in our console. The Configuration Service used to store various fleet settings like Publishing Frequency and Geofencing, and the Location Service, that receives and stores geolocation data as well as any additional sensor data your devices are sending. One important thing to call out is that unlike with our traditional connectivity stack, we do store location information in a database for historical route purposes. This data is encrypted at rest in a separate database to ensure privacy shield and GDPR compliance. I hope this gave you a solid understanding of how our tracker products work. It's now time to take a deep dive into actually writing firmware for your devices. 
Let's go over the two ways in which you can get a local copy of Tracker Edge. The first one is to download it directly from our website. So go into our documentation page and go into the top firmware section. Then click on Tracker Edge and then on getting the Tracker Edge firmware on the left. You'll see a drop down with different versions of Tracker Edge. Go ahead and select the latest one and hit download. Once the download is complete, unzip it and open it using Particle Workbench. Feel free to explore the different source files and libraries to get a better understanding of how Tracker Edge was built. But keep in mind that most of your development will likely happen either in main.cpp or on your custom source files. Now before you begin, you may want to update device OS as the default version is no longer supported. Also, you might get a prompt to update launch.json, so go ahead and just do it. And lastly, it may be possible that you're required to initialize the different get sub modules. To do so, run this command on your terminal before you begin. The second way to get a local copy of Tracker Edge is using GitHub. Tracker Edge is a public repo, which means that you can clone it or fork it as you need. To get started, visit the repo's GitHub URL. Now that you have your development environment ready and a working copy of Tracker Edge, one of the first things you'll want to know is how to send custom data to the cloud. While you could certainly use our particle.publish API, for Tracker products we recommend instead to append your custom data to the existing location publish. This way, you'll get the latest measurements and location data with every publish. To do this, you first register a location generation callback in setup. Define the new callback function and in the function, add the values you need to the location object using the JSON Writer API. I'd also like to call out the following consideration when working with Tracker 1. In order to use the GPIO in the expansion port, you first need to enable the CAN bus power, even if you're not using CAN. This is easily done via the Tracker configuration object, and you only need to do this once during setup. Let's now discuss how to customize your fleet configuration to add your own settings and tabs and have those available in the console. As we've seen before, this can be helpful, for example, to send a deployment-specific sensor calibration value or to append the serial ID of the asset you're tracking to the location publish of your device. The first thing to know is that the fleet settings are specified in JSON schema. If you go into any Tracker Edge directory, you'll find a config schema JSON file at the root level. You can see in the picture how the console settings are a visual representation of the data within that JSON. We won't go into the full details of the schema specification, but it's important to understand that it allows you to provide descriptions to your settings, tell the console how to display the options like a checkbox or dropdown, and also do some basic validation on the input fields you use. So what can you add to the configuration schema? It supports standard JSON data types like strings, integers, and booleans, among others. Additionally, all of the settings can be defined as either fleet-wide settings or device-specific settings. And you can also specify minimum and maximum firmware versions that can be used to scope settings to specific versions of your product firmware. You can upload your custom schema to the Particle Cloud via the CLI or our web tool. Keep in mind that the Particle Cloud does not automatically merge the new contents with the existing ones, so make sure to include all the elements of the default schema onto the new one. Finally, this is how you tie everything together in your firmware. Take a look at this example. We added a custom tab called Engine to our schema and added two properties to it. Once you upload the new schema to the Particle Cloud, you can visualize the properties in the console. Then in your product's firmware, you create a configuration object that matches the properties of your schema and links them to variables in your code. With this in place, anytime you modify, for example, the idle RPM speed setting, your firmware variable will automatically get the new value. I hope this gave you a better understanding on how you can customize our configuration engine. This powerful service allows you to update settings anytime you want and ensure your fleet gets the latest values even if a device is asleep or offline. When the device comes online, it'll get any updates that occurred and store them in the file system. All of this with just a few lines of code. For our full documentation and hands-on tutorials, please visit 
docs.particle.io. We covered a lot of topics in the series, so let's do a quick recap before we go. We first went over common use cases that require customization, like needing external sensor data or custom fleet configurations. Then we went into the details of the tracker stack and how the combination of hardware, firmware, and cloud services work together to make up the product. We also reviewed how to set up your local copy of Tracker Edge and a couple of useful development tips like adding to the location publish. Lastly, we went over the details of our configuration engine and how you can create custom settings and use them in your firmware. This should give you a solid foundation to start working on your own products. Please visit our documentation website for the full reference API, tutorials, and examples. Thanks for watching.